Okay, so it's that time of the month again. They're sending um, more uh, Christian propaganda. I got this in the mail today, and uh, I thought about ignoring it as I'm <clears throat> pretty busy with stuff, but um, yeah, this one kind of pissed me off, and I actually kind of uh, knew exactly how to handle this one. So, okay, you got the church using the Big Bang as they're uh, trying to get people's attention. I'm going to still frame this so that maybe I can get less reflection. Um, I do have some notes I'm going to cover on this. I'm going to give you guys a chance to read it for yourself. Here's the title. So there is a lot of really thick sarcasm in this. So strap yourselves in. Before I dig in, I'm going to make a, a couple of points um, before I actually jump into the actual deal here. Uh, first off, uh, this, with the satanic tenet, I'm going to just bring up one. The fourth one is that belief should conform to one's best scientific understanding of the world. One should not, or one should take care to not distort scientific facts to fit one's own belief, which is exactly what they're doing in this. Is that they're taking their limited scientific understanding and fitting it to their narrative rather than actually taking the um, observations for what they are. You know, you don't fit a narrative into your observations. So, um, I also have on the side here, this is part of where I'm getting uh, some of my information from. It's not related to physics, but um, let's see if I can get this to... Yeah, this is from Paul Gia. Um, the argument of, let's see here. Here, I got it written down here. If you want to look up Paul Gia. Uh, the puddle fits the hole perfectly. Okay, so this is an analogy that, look at the trees. Um, I'm going to be using from time to time. Uh, but by all means, look up Paul Gia. Um, and hear him explain it in more detail on where that's coming from. So, to my point, um, I'm going to use this as the title. The Big Bang got so many things right, dot, dot, dot. Um, so, first off, uh, it says, Since it is but a mindless accident, uh, evolutionary process is amazing how many things the Big Bang got right. Uh, they will impose personality on it in the Big Bang throughout this. So, it gets thicker as we go. Uh, it managed to create, oops, produce uh, conditions for life that exist on the planet. Earth is the only planet in our solar system that can uh, sustain life as we know it. It has many unusual, unique conditions not re required before human life could exist. No doubt evolution is Right in concluding the human life exists by chance, not design. Consider consider the wonderful or the wonder of the Big Bang. Alright, this is exactly what I'm talking about. Um, just because we are uh, only familiar with what what we see does not mean that Earth is especially rare or unique. Uh, life is simply a byproduct of chemical of chemistry over time. For example, carbon is a common molecule that is used in many organisms and matter, um, living or not. So, you know, the <clears throat> this is a perfect example of the, you know, the puddle analogy. Where if you was in a, if you was the puddle, waking up, looking around, thinking, "Oh, this hole is perfect just for me," so it must have been made just for me. You know, you're you're putting your. Um, yeah, you're automatically assuming that the purpose is designed for you rather than realizing that, yeah, you're simply a byproduct of your environment. Okay, number two. Now, there are some of these I'm, I may skip over just because you'll see a pattern in these. I'm just picking out some of the biggest ones. The Earth is the right distance from the sun. Um, again, uh, this will be another example of the puddle analogy. So... Uh, we are just the right distance from the sun, so we get the right amount of heat to sustain life. Earth is needed for fuel and chemical reactions, metabolism, liquid 
Water allows chemicals to be transported or dissolved, so water must be between 59 and 239 degrees Fahrenheit, so it is not freezer, or vaporizer freeze. Um, first off, the pressure of the atmosphere, I don't even have this in my notes, just throwing this in there. Uh, Mars, for example, water can evaporate and it doesn't have to be a set temperature. That has to do with the amount of pressure, and it does bring up some stuff later, but getting ahead all right ten percent closer to hot ten percent further to cold planets like mars and uh neptune are too cold to support life though the moon relatively close to earth the surface temperature varies each 15 lunar days from 214 degrees fahrenheit above zero to a low yeah to uh to a low of 240 degrees below fahrenheit that's because um the moon has no atmosphere to hold in any temperature. Why does the moon not have any atmosphere? Because the electromagnetic field is extremely weak. Therefore, it does not have anything to protect from the uh, our star's solar flares, which is what's ripped away what most of what Mars would have had as the atmosphere. Again, uh, the core inside planets that... Uh, the iron and nickel spinning is exactly what creates that electromagnetic field that protects us. Nowhere in any of this, as we'll go through here, and I'll freeze frame it so you could read it yourself at your own length. Just pause. Um, nowhere in here do they ever bring up electromagnetic fields. Uh, which, as you will see, that's not really too surprising. Um, so again... I'm going to skip over some of these because they become a little redundant. But uh, let's see here. So they can't deny science. They can't deny the science. Make sure I'm not skipping ahead. Uh, so they assume it must be intentional. Facts: Earth was always. Fact is, Earth wasn't always inhabitable. It took many hundreds of thousands of years for Earth to cool. Just because life spawned. Uh, through a mix of chemical reactions presented in a desired in desired conditions by nature is a byproduct of chance. So that's what I had already pre-written. Um, I'm going to skip some of this. I'm going to go ahead and take a still frame. So you guys can read this yourself at your own pace. I'm sure I'm only getting the um, cliff notes of the parts that stand out the most. A lot of this is them just trying to sound scientific to improve, you know, the casual sheep who doesn't know anything about science. So, let's see. Earth has both water and carbon. Uh, I got some notes on this one. So, let's see how they messed this up. Oh, uh, water and carbon are required for life. Carbon is necessary building block for complex... Oops. Uh, for complex organic molecules, water is necessary for many chemical reactions. If the Earth were part of the sun, why didn't the water evaporate? How did the Big Bang pull that off? Impressive. Yeah, the sarcasm is fucking palpable here. And they're already associating a personality to a, uh event. So, oh, you can't really see their sarcastic bullshit here. So, okay. Water is made up of... Two hydrogen and or the water molecule is made up of two hydrogen and one oxygen atom. Over ninety six percent of any star is primarily hydrogen, which is protons and electrons. Or a proton and electron makes up one hydrogen. So yes, hydrogen is the main building ingredient block in a majority of elements that we know today. In our uh, periodic table of elements. It's mostly of how many protons and electrons there are in a nucleus that design what kind of, um, you know, what, you know, how massive that uh, chemical is. So, it, water is actually would be fairly common. Um, so, let's see here. Water, the way that they question, the way that they worded this if Earth was part of the sun, why didn't the water evaporate? Okay, that just shows ignorance. Um, water didn't just drip off of the sun. I mean, that shows they have no idea what the sun, sun is made out of plasma. Protons, uh, 
spinning very, very quickly, you know, moving very quickly through the atmosphere and throughout the entire nucleus of that star, of any star. Um, yeah, water did not exist inside of the sun. Uh, neither did the planets come from the sun either. Uh, if anything, let's see, the sun's gravitational field helped create clumps of matter in our early solar system. So the planets that we see are accumulation of extended events of matter accumulating and running through each other, uh, not through, but into each other, clumping up and creating the planets that we have now. It wasn't extracted from the star. Um, rather than the gravitational pull helped create those. Uh, let's see here. It's just ignorance. Um, Earth's crust the right thickness. Again, this is where they're trying to throw more science and stuff the, to try to sound. And again, they're, you can clearly see the sarcasm at the end of each sentence. Um, so I'm, I didn't cover that one. Earth's moon is the right distance away. Again, you know, it's the puddle analogy all over again. So I skipped over that one. It's just blah. They're trying to sound impressive. Uh, the Earth's atmosphere is the right thickness and density. So, this is the one that really kind of uh, pinched my nerve early on. I made a point to, it said, uh, The atmosphere protects life by absorbing ultraviolet solar radiation, warming the surface through the heat renovation greenhouse effect, creating, creating pressure to keep water on the surface and reducing temperature extremes between day and night. Uh, let's see. The density of the thickness of the Earth's atmosphere serves as a protective blanket to shield it from radioactive, from daily radi deadly radiation. If radiation r reached Earth, human life would not exist. You, you know, it does reach. UV light can damage or block complex molecules. So they try to sound as intelligent as they can, causing mutations. Our atmosphere, uh, is just dense enough to protect the Earth from the 20 million meteors that enter it every day. Well, it doesn't protect entirely. Some do get through. Um, these meteors are traveling at speeds around 30 miles per second. Would endanger all life. You mean like the dinosaurs? Oh, wait. You're not going to bring that up, right? Because you think that the dinosaurs were around with the flood, and which also didn't exist. Uh, never mind. I'm not going there. So, um, no. It's... Earth's magnetic field, like as I mentioned earlier with the moon, that is the reason why we even have an atmosphere in the first place. Gravity isn't holding that shit down. Um, and even if it could, this st our star, the sun, is blowing out constantly uh, what they call solar flares that are, like I said with Mars earlier, is Blowing away atmospheres. It's the electromagnetic field created by our core spinning that actually protects our atmosphere from being blown away by radiation. And again, nowhere in here do they actually bring up electromagnetic field. And if someone spots it and can show me how I'm wrong, cool. Please do so. But, yeah, this is again an argument from ignorance. The composition of Earth's atmosphere is perfect to sustain life. Again, they're using their... Um, I didn't bother writing down notes for that one because it's, again, as I wrote in there, the puddle. You know, just because, yes, that is how we managed to sustain, to create life, is by there being just the right elements. It does not mean that those elements were designed for there. You know, there is chance. Um, so let's see here. I didn't write any more further notes. I just, the sarcasm in this was really made me grit my teeth. Um, but again, like here's where, ooh, the Big Bang knew about explosions and was, uh, to avoid danger. Really? 